Calling all retro gamers today, I'll guide you through the process of setting up Duck Station, the emulator that lets you relive the glory days of the legendary original PlayStation. While the emulator is available on multiple platforms, we'll be setting it up on a Windows machine today. So let's get started. The first step is to download Duck Station. You can simply do a Google search to find it, but to make things easier, I've dropped a link in the description below. Once you're on the download page, click on Windows over here, then click on Download Duck to download the emulator only. But as it states here, it needs one extra file for it to work, which is the runtime. Usually, if you play games on your computer, then you might have it already, but if you're not sure, then go ahead and download this one first, followed by the emulator. So once you have both files on your computer, start by installing the runtime, and if prompted, restart your computer. Then proceed with installing the emulator itself. Since DuckStation comes as a zip file, you'll need a program like 7-Zip or WinRAR to extract it. If you don't already have one, you can download and install either of these programs from the web. Once installed, simply right-click on the emulator file, select the program you downloaded, and the file will open inside the program. Here, look for the extract option, like we have one here. Click on it, and then choose the location where you want the emulator to be installed and press OK. Next, you will need to place the BIOS files inside the emulator folder. I have downloaded PlayStation 1 BIOS files from the internet. I unfortunately cannot share these BIOS files because these are copyrighted, so you're on your own with this. And since you're a pretty smart person, now you'd ask how would I know? Well, you're watching one of my videos and that too on some geeky stuff, which means you are. And that's why I bet you can figure it out. You just need to find the right place to look. So once you manage to get them, place them inside a folder named PS1 BIOS, then copy this folder into the DuckStation directory and you're good to go. Also make sure to create a desktop shortcut by right-clicking on the application, selecting Show More Options, then Send to, and finally Desktop Create Shortcut. This will save you a lot of hassle of navigating through folders whenever you want to launch the emulator. All right, once you're done with all this, you can now delete all the installation files because we don't need them anymore. And now it's time to launch the emulator. But before that, I would like to tell you that if this video is being helpful to you so far, make sure you drop a like. I can't explain how much it means to me. Okay, so once you try to launch it, Windows might flag it as a risky application as you can see here, but there's nothing to worry about because you can bypass this by clicking more info over here and then run anyway. Upon launching the emulator, you get to choose your preferred language and theme. Next, you will need to grant the emulator access to the BIOS files you added earlier, the same files we placed in the emulator folder. Simply press browse over here, navigate to the BIOS folder and select it. To verify if the BIOS integration was successful, click on one of these drop-downs here, and if you see different flags, like so, means whatever you did was successful. Next, it's time to add your game directory. For those who don't know what a game directory is, it is basically a folder where you put all of your PlayStation ROMs, also known as games, and give the emulator location of that folder. So if you don't have a folder where you have games, or you do not even have games at all, then you need to do all of that from scratch. If you don't know where to get the games from, that's another mystery you will need to figure out yourself, because the games are also copyrighted material. Again, as I said before, if you're watching this video, you ought to be smart and I believe you can figure it out. Just look for these PlayStation 1 ROMs in the right place and I'm sure you will uncover what you're looking for. All right, let's say you downloaded a game and it looks something like this. You will need to use either WinRAR or 7-Zip again since games downloaded from the internet usually come in a compressed format. Once you have extracted the games uh, the same way you extracted the emulator earlier, open the games folder. Inside, you will find a .bin and a .q file. And that's the PS1 ROM right there. Now, after you have downloaded and extracted all of the games you fancy, create a folder on your computer called PS1 Games and pop all those extracted games inside. Remember, you will need to extract these games before placing them in the folder, otherwise the emulator won't detect them. 
Once you've done that, head back to the emulator and add that folder as your game directory. It might ask for a permission to scan, just click yes and the folder is added. Now it's time to connect a controller and configure it. You can connect up to two controllers under port 1 and port 2. If you're not sure how to connect a game controller to your PC, don't worry, I've got a playlist for that. You can find the link here or in the description below. Once your controller is connected, come back here and click on automatic mapping. Select whichever controller you connected and you're good to go. Now click next and finish. And we are finally inside the emulator homepage. Here you will see all the games you added to your game directory. This will be in the list view by default, but you can also change it to the grid view if you want by clicking on this button. Now, one thing you might notice is that the games don't look too appealing without cover art. But fret not, we got a solution for that. Head over to the website I've linked in the description. Search for the game you want to download the artwork for. Let's search Crash Bandicoot first. There we go. It is this one right here. Crash Bandicoot 1996. You can choose the one you like and download it by clicking on this button. And then when the image loads up, just right click on it and select save image as and save it anywhere on your computer. Then head back to the emulator. Right click on the game, select set cover image, choose the image you downloaded and there you have it. You have successfully placed a cover art on the game and made it look much better. Do this to all of the games you have and it will make your library very beautiful. Oh, and don't forget to tidy up by deleting these unnecessary files once you're done. Now, before we start playing, let's tweak some graphic settings to enhance our gaming experience. Head over to Settings and Interface. Here, you will see the option to enable full screen mode. This setting will ensure that the emulator launches in full screen every time. It is a personal preference so choose what suits you best. Next, we head over to graphics. Keep the render settings as is and switch the adapter to your dedicated graphics card if you have one. If not, don't worry, just use whatever is available. In the rendering tab, adjust the internal resolution to your liking. For instance, you can set it to 3x native for 720p HD or even go higher if your computer is capable enough. I will opt for 5x native which is 1080p for now since I am using a full HD monitor. After this, you can tweak the aspect ratio. It's all about personal preference here. Some gamers prefer the original 4x3 aspect ratio while others prefer the widescreen 16x9 format. Choose whichever you prefer. You can also toggle on VSync if needed. Everything else should be fine by default but if you want to monitor FPS, resolution and other metrics during gameplay head over to the OSD and enable those options. For those interested in retro achievements, you can go over here and make sure enable achievements is checked. Then go ahead and log into your retro achievements account. If you want to enable this hardcore mode, click yes, otherwise no. Just so you know, it's kind of like the grounded mode for the achievements. There's nothing else to tweak here so it's time to finally launch the game. Simply double click on the game you want to play and let the memories flood back. Here we have Crash Bandicoot 1996 running amazingly on the Dock Station emulator. And wow, it still looks incredible for its age. Seeing this, I can say for sure Naughty Dog was always ahead of their time. You see, playing these games on emulators truly offers the best experience in today's era, even if you own the original console. Simply because you just can't get crisp HD resolutions and 60 FPS and beyond on those systems. Speaking of FPS, you will see all these performance metrics displayed here if you enabled them earlier. Next up, we have Tekken 3, one of the most beloved titles in the franchise. And yup, it's working like a charm. Don't mind my gameplay, I'm just enjoying the experience. You can also opt for full screen mode. But keep in mind that you will have to deal with black bars on the sides due to the original 4x3 aspect ratio of these games. However, you can change the aspect ratio in the emulator settings to 16x9 for a widescreen experience. Just remember that this stretches the image which might not be ideal for all games. 
Time to journey back and breathe life into those cherished memories once more.